Essen es uh, la última ganadora del premio European Green Capital y será capital europea el año 2017. Uh, tenemos uh, como representante de Essen al señor Matías Sin, que es el jefe de la oficina de la capital verde europea desde 2015 y jefe del departamento de medio ambiente de la ciudad de Essen desde el año 2012. When you want, Mr. Sin. Good afternoon. Thank you, Josep. Um, it's an honor for me to be in Barcelona again. It's a long time, five, six years. I've, I've, I've been in Barcelona just for a short trip. I had a conference in Figueres with uh, some very interesting uh, discussions about um, city planning and so on. And um, I hope that I'll come back to uh, Barcelona soon, because I have just a day today uh, to see a little bit of Barcelona and to be part of this uh, wonderful site here. Um, a World Heritage um, exists in Essen too. It's not a hospital, it's just a colliery. And it's a, a former coal mine. You see the um, system there behind the trees and, and the uh, paths where the people are walking or cycling are the former rail tracks where uh, the guys uh, transported 30,000 tons uh, of coal and stones a day out of the ground uh, in the surroundings of Essen and the Ruhr area. So uh, just a short glimpse on the green capital. Um, uh, Andres uh, mentioned it. Uh, for us, it was uh, the year 2010, the year of the um, capital of culture, of the uh, metropol or metropolitan region uh, of the Ruhr area. Um, and uh, after this uh, time of culture, we asked us uh, what should we do to transport in a sustainable way uh, this involvement of uh, uh, citizens uh, in, into a uh, modern future after the coal and steel times. Um, so we um, had the idea, a crazy idea, to be part uh, of the Green Capital Award. And uh, on this slide, you see these 12 top topics, let's say 12 uh, indicators, which is not the correct word, uh, I'd say uh, areas of action. Uh, from climate change uh, uh, to environmental management and to um, environmental or eco-innovation green jobs. The goals uh, of the city of Essen are very wide. Some of, uh, of you, the colleagues of Utrecht, I think, uh, would uh, normally laugh when they see the model split of Essen, uh, which is just uh, in 2000, uh, or by 2035, uh, uh, 25% for cycling. Nowadays in our city, a uh, car-friendly city, completely destroyed after the uh, Second World War, uh, was built, rebuilt as a car-friendly city. And we have now the problem to change the mindset um, of the citizens um, coming back uh, to the former times where uh, bicycles were the normal uh, way to uh, come from one point to another. Um, other aspects are the refurbishment rate. Normally in cities all over Europe, I'd say all over the world, you are, uh, we have a uh, refurbishment ra uh, rate of about 1% uh, uh, a year. Um, just our uh, city utilities are, have, or have the power uh, to uh, uh, renovate a little bit faster. Um, just a view on the uh, leading projects uh, that brought us to uh, the Green Capital Award. The city of Essen uh, um, has two rivers, alive amongst two rivers. And let me turn a little bit around. Uh, 
have a look on our logo. They will see in the north this river called Emscher. This river, former days, uh, was a beautiful meandering river uh, uh, flowing slowly from the uh, um, Sauerland region to the Rhine. In the 19th uh, century, with the coal mining starting and the industries, there was the problem that we had a subsidence in the whole region uh, up to 20 meters. So the river of Emscher, this little nice river, flew back, started uh, at the mouth, at the Rhine, back to the spring. And you imagine what happened with the people. All these diseases uh, Marcus uh, talked about, uh, the diarrhea was the, the easiest uh, the um, um, people and the workers had. So uh, they had not any possibility uh, to transport the uh, um, sewages to the Rhine. Just, they could just uh, build a concrete corset. Uh, and that's uh, the River Emscher, which isn't a river anymore. Uh, just a canal, to an open canal, in a five million uh, inhabitants area, uh, an open canal to transport uh, sewage from uh, the eastern part uh, to, the, to the western part of the, of the Ruhr area. Nowadays, the subsidence has finished. And we can do what all cities do, uh, using tubes, subsoil, transporting the uh, sewage in canals. And the project to reconstruct this complete river is a project uh, uh, with a budget of 4.5 billion euros. It's in time. No one hears about. There's a airport in Berlin that doesn't really, uh, that isn't really in time. Uh, but this project works. Um, there are new canals, uh, um, depth up to uh, 35 to 40 meters in the ground, because we have to let the uh, sewage uh, flow to the next uh, uh, water treatment plant. Um, and the new little creeks that you can see there are becoming a new green and blue infrastructure of the cities and our, the city of Essen. So just this little view. Um, the river starts in Holzwickete. The red uh, sections are completed. In Dortmund, this uh, second uh, big town in, uh, in the Ruhr area, uh, there you can find a little fish that survived the 100 years of sewage canal in the near, near the spring uh, of, of this uh, River Emscher. And he's seen now back in Dortmund and will hope that we'll uh, meet him uh, in two or three years in Essen when the, uh, um, the river will be uh, reconstructed uh, just uh, uh, up to this, uh, into this region. So, uh, for Essen, it was the possibility to reconstruct all the tributaries, um, transporting sewage uh, to, the, to the Emscher, open canals, concrete uh, corset uh, canals, stinking, smelling very bad, uh, just the smell of the, uh, of the, of the uh, conurbation. So today, we have these new little rivers, uh, green areas, uh, pathways, um, cycling paths there, and the people are using these new green areas. You see uh, these axes here. And I have to come back to our logo. In the south, there's a, another beautiful river called Ruhr. And this is the river 
give the name to the whole area. This river uh, is uh, beautiful with a lot of, of dams and uh, hydrocarbon uh, production systems and so on. Um, in a beautiful landscape, hilly, uh, and there live, say the Essen people, uh, the rich and the poor have to live in the north where the Emscher is. It's a little bit of a flat region. So uh, the idea was to transport the south to the north. And when we did that, we registered that 100 years ago, there were city planners with an idea of green belts, of power belts, they called it. And these power belts uh, had the northeast Axis. Just the idea, and this is health, uh, that the workers for Krupp uh, factories, for the collieries, uh, the coal mines, uh, these workers uh, needed fresh air. They needed places where they could live when they didn't work. And so they, uh, these city planners used uh, the um, the situation of, of, the, of, the, of the city and uh, built these green belts. And they exist until today, with some breaks in after the World War and the uh, car-friendly city and so on. But mo most of these axes exist. And we uh, laid over these uh, green axes from the east to the west and the west to the east these uh, new uh, three uh, green axes from the south to the north. So one of the biggest reconstruction areas was uh, the former Krupp uh, factory. One third of the city was Krupp, and Krupp uh, was a forbidden area, just pr producing steel, pr producing uh, machines, and so on. After the uh, transformation, the structural problems uh, in the 60s, uh, 70s, 80s, uh, Krupp merged with uh, Thyssen and uh, the headquarter was in Düsseldorf, away from Essen. We had this big area with nothing but uh, polluted soils. Uh, we, couldn't, we couldn't do anything with it. It, was, it depended on Krupp. Some years later, the ThyssenKrupp company had the idea to come back to Essen. They had big areas. They, tried, uh, they had the idea to uh, build a new headquarter. And this headquarter is today is, uh, sorry, this, this area here. These are the new headquarters. What about the, the wasted uh, areas. What about the uh, polluted soil? You can't transport a thousand and ten thousand of tons uh, across the whole republic to a uh, don't know what. So we built, and this was the possibility, a new park with little hills and ways and playgrounds, and we used the polluted soil in a. Um, very correct and legal way to, uh, to hold this, uh, th these uh, metals and uh, um, polluted, or let's say, um, persistent organic uh, compounds and so in this area. On the other hand, the people living there, former workers, a lot of migrants, uh, got a new park. So, what about, what about this little fontaine you see here? This isn't groundwater. If you have a headquarter, there are hundreds of square meters of roofs. What about this rainwater? And think about uh, cloudbursts. Cloud uh, think about heavy weather. You have to transport this rainwater to somewhere. The normal canal system can't uh, afford this. You need an idea. So what happened? The 
rainwaters from this headquarter is transported via tubes across this, this city and comes out in this font fontaine. And this fontaine feeds this lake. So nowadays, we have in the city, near the city, a new lake, a new park, a new recreation area, a new, new area where co uh, cold air is produced to be transported to the city, and so on. So we have a new multi-coded uh, area there. In the north of this area was a former cargo train, a tr uh, railway uh, track. And this track uh, was in the hand of the cities. Uh, we use it today as a, um, as a cycling path, which exists in Essen. And sorry, I, I, I jump a little bit. Which exists in Essen and will be built from Essen, or it, ex it exists nowadays from Essen to Mülheim, and from Mülheim to Duisburg, and then we are in the Rhine area, and we have a cycling path up to uh, Freiburg, Utrecht, uh, Amsterdam, wherever you want to go. Uh, in the eastern direction, we are uh, under construction. Uh, in okay, 10 years, we'll have uh, a highway for bikes uh, with a length of 100 kilometers, uh, six meter uh, with light, uh, where you can really drive with your bike. Um, and big, uh, it, it's very easy because this was a railway track. So it's easy to, to drive there all across the region. So let me come back. Another idea was, uh, there you see um, where the yellow crane is situated here, starts the city, the city center. On the other side there is the university. In between was rails, slaughterhouses, not a very interesting area to live there or to be there, uh, a no-go area. And uh, the city planners uh, and, in, and uh, the colleagues tried to uh, get investors to build up a new quarter. It was, imp it was impossible. Just after uh, building this blue and green uh, area in between this former uh, industrial zone, investors came. Nowadays, we have uh, 2,000 uh, workplaces there, jobs, and uh, 1,400 um, apartments, people living there. So this is a kind of transformation. And this is the story, uh, the story of Essen that comes back and comes again and comes again, bringing green and blue back to the city. Another thing, uh, and this is nearly a kind of uh, participation. This is just the opening of a new, uh, another new lake near this uh, railway path I talked about. Um, another um, area where we needed uh, waters, where we needed green spaces to transport the information that this is a beautiful site to live. And the uh, landlords there uh, are on the way to renovate their buildings because they are in a, yes, in a livable, uh, more livi, live, uh, you know what I mean, um, air. <laughs> Sometimes the English words are so difficult. <laughs> 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 uh, we hope that we will have no uh, segregation there. We hope that uh, people will stay uh, there, there are some new apartment houses, and they were planned to bring uh, yes, uh, mid middle class uh, people to this area. And I hope, and I okay, I see that it works. So um, I won't uh, tell uh, you a lot about renovating. There are programs um, as all over the world. And we are using uh, the uh, programs, normally the programs of the um, state of Northern Westphalia, 
uh, that helps us to uh, renovate quarters, uh, neighborhoods, and so on. Um, just, I'd like to mention uh, again the whole uh, Ruhr area with Essen, uh, Dortmund, Duisburg, and some counties there. And all over this uh, region, we are working with these renovation programs, as we do it with the railway. Uh, and the, the railway is this one. Uh, the new uh, commuting system uh, starts in 2018 with a 15 minutes uh, um, uh, rhythm, transporting people from Cologne at the Rhine to Hamm in the at the eastern side. So this will help us to reduce the car uh, use. Um, across the Ruhr area is a, a very old uh, transportation way, hundreds, thousand years ago. This is the former Helwig. And this way is nowadays, what is it? A highway for cars. The biggest parking place all over the world because uh, uh, in the morning, in the afternoon, everybody uses his car and is standing and waiting for, uh, for the next exit. With this train, it will help us. With the, uh, um, the railway pass, the students, ho we hope, will use the, rail, uh, the, sorry, the, the uh, uh, cycling path to come from the campus in Essen to Bochum to Duisburg. And I hope that they will help the others who like to use their cars, uh, to join them on this big and beautiful uh, railway, a former railway track. So where am I? Um, we talked about uh, the heating problem. In a region where coal mining was the former industry, uh, there were big, uh, heating or um, power plants, um, and all these power plants produced electric energy used by the industry, but also heat. And uh, some of them were coupled um, by time by time as a um, heating system um, in cogeneration. The waste incineration plants in Herten, in Essen, and in Oberhausen were coupled by this long-distance heating system. It's a possibility to reduce the use of uh, um, coal, nowadays oil or gas, um, for heating. It works. The next step should be to transport coal via these or parallel systems using the uh, possibility to, to change heat to cold. Uh, to cold. Um, the STEAG uh, is uh, one of the big companies uh, in producing uh, energy, or let's say changing coal, uh, chemical energy to electrical energy. Um, and they try to couple two of these long distance heating systems, the one of the Rhine area, uh, which is this, this axis with the uh, former axis uh, in the Ruhr area. So we'll have a long distance heating, uh, uh, heating system to transport the heat that the electrical power plants do not need. It's just, that's what cogeneration is. So, now, something for, for the people. I talked about planning and things like that. Let's switch to the inhabitants, to the young and older people living in Essen, living in the area. There is a nice river called Ruhr. And this river has a little lake, uh, and this lake, uh, is for sports and so on, but no one is allowed to, to swim or to bath in this river because this river is a former in industrial used river. Uh, however, five million, no, let's say two million people get their drinking water from this river. So we need a high tech, uh, 
high-tech uh, drinking water production system, which is very, very super. Uh, and I invite you to visit this uh, thing, the best drinking water you ever get, got. <laughs> um, we need a lot of technology. And we have the problem with the pharmaceuticals in the water. As always, where you uh, use uh, these uh, micropollutants and so on. And uh, what we did was to have a measurement uh, uh, of two years, three years now. And we now, we now know that there are 20 to 30 days a year when the water is as uh, perfect, I'd say, that the uh, uh, bathing water um, um, framework directive, or the bathing water directive, that is, is, uh, um, is fulfilled. So we can allow swimming in the Ruhr. And that what we'll, that's what we will do in 2017 as a big event. And Copenhagen did the same in the harbor and other cities too. So we can show that the nature got their rivers back, that the men, the uh, people got their river back. So citizen communication, uh, communication engage, engagement. Uh, our demand is we create identification uh, with uh, a school called Nature School for the thousand, yes, 40,000 people, children, uh, are part of this school every year. And they do uh, some action somewhere, like, uh, like they're on a, in, a, in a park, uh, uh, helping to renovate this park or learning about biodiversity and so on. Um, the urban gardening uh, starts with a very powerful in Essen. It's, uh, okay, it's a hype at the moment. Everybody wants to create its own food, and it works. It works very well. Sometimes they are form of playgrounds that we use nowadays for, uh, for urban gardening. The last thing is the year 2014. In 2014, two, years, uh, two, day, two weeks before we applied uh, for the Green Capital Award in Copenhagen then, when uh, Ljubljana Simona won the title, uh, we had a big, big thunderstorm and 15% of our trees broke uh, in half an hour. Cloud bursts to a 100th century uh, um, rainfall, things like that. In this moment, the people of Essen organized themselves. And in six days, all the uh, bus lines, all the tram lines worked again. All the schools reopened, and 4,000 people organized by Facebook, or via Facebook, helped to uh, clean the streets. That's what I say is resilience. Just, resi just uh, one part of the resilience of the city. Uh, we, now, everyone wants to plant a new tree. <laughs> and uh, how to organize that, how to transport this information, how to couple this with uh, um, um, education. And there's a very uh, nice program called One Tree Per Child, coming from uh, Australia uh, via uh, Olivia Newton-John, and we uh, green cities in our green capital network uh, will join this activity of uh, the uh, one tree per child and plant one tree per child or plant thousands, ten thousands of, tree, uh, of trees, but one tree for every child. This will be the next uh, project. So just, uh, do I have two minutes? Two minutes, okay. Um, social media. Uh, what I show you is a little app. Uh, built uh, or um, programmed um, by a city or, or by, by, a, by a programmer in Florence, was a new project um, called Green Apes. So if you want to join it, you, are, has a little, you have a little avatar, an ape, 
and this ape runs across the city, and it, this ape uh, buys, when you are on the way, uh, buys um, something uh, like a, a fair trade uh, clothes also. And for every uh, thing you have done, you get a coconut by the community. You tell the community, I bought this wonderful uh, new suit, uh, fair trade, uh, or I it took uh, the tram, not my car, and I made uh, 20 kilometers my bicycle, and the community uh, gives you a warm hand and gives you some coconut. So this is nice, this is a play, but there's an economic side. There are a dozen of companies at the moment that give you uh, a little bit uh, better prices if you come with the coconuts to them, your virtual, virtual coconuts. And this is the idea of uh, green apes, and we try to transport, by the way, uh, the idea of this uh, changing of mindset of the green, uh, uh, green living, sustainable living, uh, to all of them who use their smartphone not only, not only to getting mails or uh, SMSs. So, um, see you soon in Essen. Thank you. <laughs>